Hello and welcome to the Buying King Stock Market Q&A livestream. I answer questions exclusively asked by my Discord members. So if you have a question and you want me to answer it, be sure to join my Discord group. The link will be in my description. Can you dig a little deeper into FTCH? This company is called Farfetch Limited. I don't know if I've looked at the stock before because I'm not very familiar with it. This is a company with almost a $10 billion market cap and they're currently not profitable. They're losing $2 for every share that you own. So really whenever you spend 27 or $29, you can shave $2 off of that. You're paying 27 or you're only getting $27 of value because this company is not profitable. And again, liabilities and assets are factored into this price as well. We're gonna take a look at the company profile just so I get a gist of what this company is about and what industry they're in. It's a subsidiary of Farfetch.com. Okay, um, no, Farfetch.com is a subsidiary of Farfetch Limited. Uh, provides an online marketplace for luxury goods in Americas, Europe, and Middle East, Africa, and Asia Pacific. It operates in three segments, digital platform, brand platform, and in-store. The company operates Farfetch.com, an online marketplace, as well as for... Okay, so, so far what I'm getting from is this... This is pretty much like a, um, it sounds like a, a Shopify, but for luxury brands or something like a StockX maybe. If you guys are familiar with StockX, they sell um, secondhand shoes, I believe. I believe they're all secondhand, but pretty much you purchase them and they're untouched from the box. And it's just a way for people to, to trade shoes pretty much like stocks because the, the price of the shoe is tracked over time and people can see if they're getting a deal for the shoe or not. So it, it's got a $10 billion market cap, unprofitable as of right now. Let's take a look at previous earnings results. So yeah, they're, they're in tech. It looks like pretty much all four quarters are pretty much right in line with each other. There's no huge quarter where they're expected to outdo the regular sales or whatever. And quarterly, um, yeah, quarterly they've been doing okay. Revenue-wise, annually they've just been completely exponentially growing. Re Exponential growth on revenue. I mean, look at this. From 2017 through 2019, they've way more than doubled their revenue. From 385 to 1 billion to 1 billion dollars, uh, th 385 million. So, let's do that point 385. And yeah, so they have Revenue has gone up 159% in the past two years for this company. And of course, they're not profitable. They're actually bleeding a lot of money. And who knows if the, the end is yet to come for how much money they bleed. But I'm assuming this is also a company that's pretty new uh, startup to say. So yeah, you pull up the max chart and it goes all the way back to 2018. So really hasn't been around for that long so i don't care a whole lot about profitability what i do care about right now is sales numbers are they are they making any sales and yeah they are and they're growing exponentially which is fabulous and given how many sales they've had last year 1 billion and given their market cap of a 10 billion that means that they're trading at a price to sales ratio of a 10x which actually isn't bad especially for a a new tech company, a startup. Let's look into more of their statistics. So yeah, price to sales, we've got 7.31, not terrible at all. And of course there's no PE ratio since this company is not profitable, but we'll take a look at their financials and see what they've got going on. I don't care much for the income statement. We already saw their exponentially growing sales. What I do wanna see is their bank account. How much cash do they have in there? How many assets do they have compared to liabilities? and if this is a, a financially strong company. So, so far for total cash, we've got $300 million in cash. That's not terrible at all. Total current assets, 645 million, and total assets outstanding comes in at $2.2 billion, which gives this company a price to book ratio of around a 5X, which is, which is beautiful. Um, that's a pretty strong price to sell uh, price to books ratio right there a price to book ratio if you guys aren't sure what that is That's when you take the market cap of a company and you divide it by how many assets they have so you see Okay, if this company has 200 billion in assets, how much am I paying for this for this stock? So if a company were to have one dollar in assets, this would be equivalent to paying five dollars for that company um, So that's what that means total current liabilities comes in at half a billion 
and total liabilities comes under $1 billion at just $890 million. So we can go ahead and do an asset to debt ratio on that. So we do 2.2 divided by 8.8. .8. And we get an asset to debt ratio of a 2.5. Like I've mentioned to you guys before, I, I love anything above a one is safe. Anything above a two is, is pretty great and you can sleep well at night. So this company is a 2.5. So they, they are great financially so far. And as you guys can see here, they're currently holding no long-term debt. So good on them. They paid all that off in the year of 2017. So that's, that's very good for them. And current debt is also all paid off. So a financially stable company that's growing revenues. And right now they are bleeding money. But, um, you know, all you have to do in the long run is figure out how to turn more sales into profit and and you'll be good from there. So and the tech industry has usually pretty high margins. So uh, we'll have to see what happens with them. E-commerce is something that I don't know if I would want to touch right now just because Amazon is such a dominant player. And second to that is eBay. Then you got the Facebook marketplace. And there's so many competitors out there that are trying to dip their toes into e-commerce like Shopify is another really big name in that space. So I don't know if this is going to be something like the real real, which is already a stock that sells secondhand Louis Vuitton, Dior, um, other and, and uh, luxury brands like that. So those are my thoughts on Farfetch'd. It's financially strong as a company. I don't think it's too overvalued right now, especially for a startup. And um, if it's a long term hold for you and if you understand the business better than I do, then uh, um, if I was in your shoes, then why, why not give it a shot, you know? Someone said Home Depot. We'll definitely look, look at it. Thanks for reminding me, guys. I got to buy a new dryer for one of my tenants. So that also happened over the weekend. But uh, the cool thing about being a landlord is that some months you actually make money. <laughs> Where, whereas most of the months there's something to fix. So Home Depot is a company. Dang, I never knew their market cap was this high at a $300 billion market cap. That's pretty pretty insane and i'm sure the stock has been yep has been up a lot since march because of covid everybody doing their home repairs and and these department stores just doing crazy sales numbers okay so this is a company that is profitable which is great it's making ten dollars and 92 cents of eps so earnings date is november 17th i'm wondering if they already announced some earnings i'm not too i don't know a whole lot about the stock yeah, this is a stock that I used to look at about a year ago. And they do pay a dividend, which is around a 2% yield. So nothing too crazy, but it's also something that is sustainable for the company. They're not overpaying right now, uh, which it looks like they could maybe start paying a little bit more since their sales are up so high. But yeah, let's take a look at their uh, past estimates here. And they've been kind of spotty. Yeah, revenue and net income. So far in 2020, 2020 isn't even over and they're already beating 2019 in terms of sales and earnings right now. So that's just beautiful coming from that stock. So they still have Q4 to announce in 2020. So that's going to be great for them. Who knows how many people are using Home Depot over the autumn. But we'll see. Sales have been increasing just fine. Net income has been increasing just fine. But this is really going to be a breakout year for the stock. I believe that. So this is a company that is trading at a 26 times forward P.E. ratio, which is typically before COVID. This is what growth companies would trade at. So you could find a Facebook trading at this valuation, um, uh, something like an Apple, maybe if it was having a really uh, growthful year. And uh, right now we've got Home Depot trading at a 26 times forward P.E. ratio. Now, is Home Depot a growth stock? Not in my opinion, they're definitely a value company, which is why they're paying a dividend, which is why their revenue is so slow in growth. And same with their net income is also growing pretty slow. But honestly, a 26 times forward PE ratio isn't terrible. Again, with analysts downgrading stocks, saying that they're not gonna make that much money and then stocks come out and actually make more than was expected. That also plays a factor in it. And a price to sales ratio of a 2.5. Wow, is that really what, really? Is that what it's at? 2.5? Let me see. Okay. So, wow. Okay. 
So far in 2020, Home Depot has made $110 billion in sales. How did I miss this? Okay, so they've made $110 billion in sales and their market cap is $300 billion. Guys, this is like if if Apple's market cap was around uh, $600 billion or $700 billion rather than $2.2 trillion. That's kind of what you're getting here. Obviously, Apple's margins are a little bit more rich than Home Depot. Uh, they are pulling in more profit and they're growing profit at a faster rate than Home Depot is uh, because Home Depot has been pretty pretty flat for the past couple years uh, but still growing a little bit. Uh, Home Depot, honestly, not looking like too bad of a company to, uh, to be looking into right now. That price to sales ratio really has my attention. That's that's pretty low for a price to sales ratio um, of any company, a value company, a growth company. I want to take a look at their financials and see what they've got in the bank account as well, and and make sure that they're holding a decent amount of cash and assets. Okay, expand all. Let's take a look at total cash for this company stands in at two billion dollars. Nothing that blows me away. That's actually a pretty low amount of cash on hand when you've got a three hundred billion dollar company. Like that's that's pretty dang low. Apple's got about uh what is it, one hundred billion dollars in cash, something around there. So they've gotta they gotta start saving more cash. Total current assets around twenty billion dollars and total assets outstanding comes in at fifty one billion dollars for this company, so not bad not bad right there so if we were to do a price to book uh, ratio on this company what would we have we'd have uh, we do 300 divided by 51 something like that so yeah we'd have a price to book ratio of around a 5.8 which is is decently fair so this is a company that does hold current debt of two billion dollars which is even more than their uh, total cash on hand right now. I'm not a big fan of that. Not a huge fan of that at all. Total current liabilities comes in at 18 billion. And what did we have total current assets at 19 billion? Just neck and neck, about a one times um, current ratio right there. You could definitely sell off all your current assets, which is like cash on hand and stocks and other very uh, liquid investments and you can pay off all this current liability but you won't have much assets left over so that's a little shaky right there also total current li or total liabilities outstanding is about right in line also with total assets so i'm not in love with this asset to debt ratio of a one it's it's okay uh, but i think they could definitely do some more work on improving that situation right there so other than that, the price to sales ratio is pretty low for this company. They've got to work on um, paying off some debt uh, and and uh, growing their cash pile a little bit. Thank you for watching the Buy and King Stock Market Q&A live stream. Again, I only answer questions asked by my Discord members. So if you have a question and you'd like to join my Discord along with 200 plus other members, be sure to click that link in my description to join my Discord today.